So if you want poly menus like this, where we can just use them all over the place in every single program, in resolve, trimming forward, slicing, trimming backwards, any single shortcut in any single program on a Pi menu. Application called Auto Hot Pi and it uses a Auto Hot key, but in Pi menus. So you'll see here, there's a quick little demo here. You're able to add all your keyboard shortcuts into multiple Pi menus for every single program. So I'll show you how this works really quickly because I've got it set up right here in this browser right now. And so let's say I want to go back a page. I can use my quick shortcut and just swipe to the left, back a page, swipe right, forward a page, swipe up, new tab, swipe down, close tab, close tab. I'll give you a quick example of how to set this up. Once you've installed it from the GitHub repo, you can just open up the application and you can just make a new Pi menu. So let's say this is the Windows default Pi under the default profile. For each application, you can add its own profile. So you can use the same shortcut multiple times and it'll only activate in that specific application. So let's say the Windows default, it will not activate whenever you have all hot pie open. So once we save and run, we'll have the hot pie, the all hot pie. And this is, you can also use this for opening files. So let's say we just go down like this. We can just go to HDRIs and it'll just open up our HDRIs folder right here. And same for thing, if you wanted to go to downloads, we just go down to downloads and this is going to open up our downloads folder. You can have infinite pies on every single application. So let's say we're in here, I have this pie, but then let's say I want to add another pie. So I have this right now set for one shortcut as F23. And I go back into auto hot pie, which is down in the tray, right click auto hot pie settings. We can add another Windows pie menu. So we'll add another one right now. We'll do this, we'll just call this Pi 2, we'll choose a keystroke. I'll put it as F24 because I've got set that set to the second button on my mouse. So I use the two extra keys on my mouse for these two pies, for the two default pies for each program. Click accept. You can do hover over some menus, release some function, that's fine. Selection color, we can just click add pie menu. And now you get this interface here. And we can, that when you click on them, you'll see what's going down. You'll see that there's white text on a white background. So you'll need to go to menu appearance change the background color to something else, to whatever you really want. One I like to do is label roundness. I like to round the edges on these buttons and then we can start editing them. So let's say we come to the first one, we come to functions and let's say we want up to be window tab or window switch, even if you want to call it that. And then we can do function, send key, and we can just do windows, so you have this windows tab, you'd love to press tab. Sometimes it might act a bit weird. You can also use the on-screen keyboard. If you have a 60% keyboard and you can't press some of the keys, that's another quick tip, but windows tab, we click accept. Now we have this. Once we click save and we run the pie menus and we use our new shortcut, you'll see we have this at the top. And once we click it, it's going to activate the windows tab and we can switch to desktop two. We can switch back to desktop one. But what I have here set up is I have previous and next desktop. So I'm able to switch desktops with left and right on my default pie. And now with the new pie, I'm able to also come into this mode. But you can just go endless with this. So you can have every single shortcut just linked to pie menus that are really quick and accessible. Now in DaVinci Resolve, this is especially useful because there's loads of weird, weird, weird shortcuts like trim to playhead forward, trim to playhead back which uses control shift bracket, control shift, like left bracket, right bracket. I'll show you really quickly here. So what we could do is we can come into auto pie menu, yeah. And if we don't have a pie menu for resolve already made, we can just come into here. We're gonna make a new profile right now. Add new profile, I'm gonna call it resolve. We're gonna click get focused application. And we're just gonna click on resolve to make sure that the resolve window is in focus. Now it says resolve.exe. We can just click, that's it, that's it done. We click create profile. And now the pie menu will only activate whenever you're the window's focused in resolve. So we can add a new pie menu. We can call this resolve default pie. We can choose a keystroke and we might want to do, the, we're going to use our main button on our mouse, like our, our secondary extra button going to add a pie menu. We're going to change the menu appearance again. Something like that for now. Might even change the font color to 
something white. And then we'll just change the roundness to make these more rounded. And we'll maybe expand it a bit. And then what we'll do is we're going to just add a function and we're going to add the bottom and we're going to add a thing and we're going to call it slice. And we're just going to take function, send key, and then set the key to S, accept. And then let's say we want to do trim to playhead forward. So we can do trim playhead FWD or something if you want. And then do the same for the back, but we're just going to click function, send key, control, shift, right bracket. So it's going to do shift, control, right bracket. And then we're going to do the same for this. We're going to do trim to play ahead. Back function, send key, control, shift, back bracket, except now we have these two functions here and we have a slice function as well. And we can add whatever else we want to the rest of them. We're going to just save it. Come on out for right here. We can just go down and it slices the clip. We can move the playhead wherever we want. We can just use the pie menu to slice with the mouse. Slice. Completely open source and free. This tool is so valuable for anyone that really wants to use any sort of program or multiple programs with complex shortcuts. Let's come into this clip and we want to clear everything back from this section. We just do trim to playhead back and it's cleared. And we come here and we do trim to playhead forward, trim to playhead forward, and we're able to just chop the clip up as much as we want. So hopefully you found some value in this video. I know that loads of people don't really like buy menus, but if you can implement them into your workflow in any software, then you're going to benefit from it a lot. And I just thought I'd share this tool because I was looking for something like this for ages. And when I came across it and started using it on a daily basis, I realized that like barely anybody uses this and no one mentions or talks about it.